Yeah. Let's uh, check in with other areas of the Strand. Let's go to Garden City now, where uh, Candace Smith joins us. And Candace, you're down actually in the ocean. Yeah, pretty much. I am down here in the ocean. Uh, just a couple of minutes ago, we had a deck actually blow by us. I wish you guys could have seen it. It just kind of went by like a little boat out here in the waves. But it is now up on the steps every couple of moments. As you can see, these waves are coming up against the decks. And in a couple of minutes here, you'll see one wash up against my feet. It is very hard to stand out here. The wind is really blowing. These are some very strong gusts of winds. I mean, look at this water just coming right in up onto the steps. That's the highest that I've seen it so far just yet. But I would say the last hour or so, this is what it's been doing out here in Garden City. And it's continually getting worse. I'm not sure uh, where the eye of the storm is at this point, but there is debris all over the place. There is really no beach left at this point. Right now it is just uh, washing up ashore onto the rocks and up onto us, and we'll continue to monitor it. But if, uh, if you're outside, probably not the best idea at this time. Brian was talking about a bad sandbox in Myrtle Beach. Well, this is a, a bad place to uh, be out and about in in Garden City right now. Very dangerous situation, a lot of debris. Oh, I can see the, uh, the porch down there now flipping in the water. It is really difficult to see from here. But um, we've seen a couple roofs go, some shingles flying around. There is just debris all over the beach that's washing up. Uh, I hope the pier down there is doing okay because it's really getting pounded at this point. That's the very latest that we have here in Garden City. We'll try to stay dry down here on the steps. We'll send it back to you guys. All right, Candace, one quick question for you. Uh, this is actually, tide is going out. I think low tide is just after right. 1 o'clock today. Um, that tide I, isn't going out. No, definitely not. That's definitely from the hurricane. It, where where it's has the tide, how far back has the tide you, been? Allison. Uh, I'm not really sure what your question was, but I can tell you that um, it's, it's a definitely a very dangerous situation here in Garden City. I apologize, can't hear you. Uh, we'll send it back to you guys now in the studio. All right, Candace Smith, thank you very much. Live in Garden City. It goes without saying uh, for she and uh, Ed, the photographer there, to be safe. Yes. Amazing images coming in at Garden City. We checked in at the pavilion. Now let's go to Conway where we find, actually, let's look at, back at the pavilion. Yeah, These live question. pictures. The clock has, has blown over. That is the clock on the oh. top of the Myrtle Beach Pavilion that has now blown over. And, you know, I don't, I don't think I ever remember seeing that before in any previous hurricanes. That's been up there for an awfully long time. And it, it may have, and they may have set it back up, but we, I don't remember that. So often we see it every night. I mean, it is a trademark. It is a trademark of that area, and that is the uh, pavilion clock. And uh, it has fallen over, folks. Um, there's uh, not a lot more you can say to that picture. Uh, if that's the least of our concerns, then I think we'll all be grateful, but certainly Definitely. you don't want to see uh, anything at all happen. Well, it's not just right along the Grand Strand that we're seeing a good bit of uh, severe weather. We're also seeing a lot of rain in the Conway area, and that's where Kyle Granger is, joins us now live. Uh, and Kyle, it is really coming down out there. It is coming down. We're not seeing the winds quite as strong as Candace and Brian were seeing down along the coast, but inland we are seeing a lot of rain, which, as we've mentioned, is going to be a problem. And I don't know if you can see this. Jim and Allison, I'm going to ask you to kind of step in here and tell me what you can see. Can you see the, the, the rain just kind of blowing around in the wind there? Yeah, we can, Kyle. Okay. I mean, that kind of tells the story of what's going on in here in Conway. Even though the winds aren't as strong, it's still whipping this wind around, the, the rain around. And Kyle, it looks like it's multiple directions. Yeah, it kind of is. It's kind of swirling around out here. It's not really just, you know, a lot of times we have rain and it just comes down in one direction. Here it's just kind of going one way and then the other way. Uh, that's just the best way I know how to describe it. Obviously, the trees back over there. Uh, just so you know, for those of you who don't know where we're, where we're standing at right now, we that is 501. That's just beyond those trees right there. We're in the Atlantic Center in Conway, and uh, there there's still a few people out there on 501. But it looks like most of the people have uh, taken that advice to get off of 501. But the the trees are blowing around over there, and the the wind is definitely uh, whipping the rain around out here. And we can talk to Ed Piotrowski about this more in just a few minutes. But just in the short time that we've been looking at that picture, we've literally seen the rain go uh, mm -hmm. from east to west. Mm -hmm. And you can and you can definitely tell how, how the how the most powerful part of the storm is getting closer to Conway because the, the conditions are getting worse here as well. You know. Yeah, I, and I agree with what you said, Kyle, uh, about Highway 501 right behind you. Um, throughout the di the morning, we have seen a lot of cars going back and forth on that, even as the conditions started to deteriorate. Uh, but now I'm not seeing as many cars behind you, so maybe people are staying off the roads now, hopefully. I'm not well, seeing as many either. Hopefully they are because it's for their safety. Yeah. And, and one other thought here. With the amount of rain that's come down this past week and the amount of rain that's falling right now, um, 
there is going to be a lot of standing water on the ground and the ramifications of that on roads and in farms and all across the board. I mean, that's going to be the story of tomorrow and the next 48 hours as we begin to try to dry out and figure out exactly what kind of long-term damage that potentially could have. As I was driving around, Jim and Allison, am I still here? Yes. Okay. As I was driving around, you know, the ditches are full. Yeah. It's just a matter of time before these ditches the water's got to go somewhere and, and it's going to be in the roadway it's going to be you know in grassy surfaces like outside of our studio here brian the photographer there if you could uh show this you know the water's just standing here there's probably an inch of water right here outside the studio and it's still coming yeah. down mm -hmm. all right kyle granger thank you very much we'll check back in with you a little bit later on um as kyle said dishes are full the ground is saturated when I mean, we had just less than two weeks ago, we had her, uh, Alex that came through, gave us a lot of rain. Then Bonnie, just what, two days ago, mm -hmm. uh, dumped a ton of rain on the area. And now we're getting even more. And uh, it, there's just really not many places for it to go. We are saturated with it. About an hour ago, we chatted with the chairman of the Horry County Council, Liz Gillen, who said at the time that, and I don't have the exact quote here, but she was in effect proud of her uh, team, the emergency management personnel and what have you. Um, but now this is the hour mm -hmm. that a lot of that is going to be go into effect. A lot of that preparation, a lot of that training. Yeah, their work will begin once uh, once the bad part of the weather is over. That's when their work begins. They have to go in and assess. Let's check in now with Rebecca Fox, who is at the uh, Conway Emergency Operations Center. We're going to join, let her join us by phone. The weather has just become too bad any, for uh, any live shots out of that area anymore. But Rebecca, I understand you have some information about power outages. That's right, Allison. I mean. As you heard, it was a relatively quiet morning, but the first uh, damage reports are coming in. Right now, we've heard that 61 people at the Green Sea Floyd Shelter are without power. Uh, we, we really don't have any more information at this time. That just came down, but 61 people at the Green Sea Floyd Shelter are without power. Also, a, a fairly large power outage in the Garden City and Myrtle Beach area. Uh, Sandy Cooper is telling us that about 7,300 people, that's 7,300 people, are without power again in the Garden City and Myrtle Beach area. For what we know about that, there's no specific incident at that place that's causing the power outages just due to the storm, but we'll bring you more information about that outages uh, as we know about them. And again, power officials are, are going to the scenes of both to assess the situation and see what they can do. Um, in terms of damage, a few reports of trees down, one tree down on Juniper Bay Road at the corner of Busy Corner Road. Um, it is blocking part of Juniper Bay Road, and public work officials were called to the scene. must have been a half hour ago. They're probably on the scene now doing work on that. There is a tree across the power line at Highway 544 and Cedar Lane Road. Um, we have no idea if, power, if there is power out at that location, but power crews are on their way now to see if it's causing any damage. Again, that's, that's never a good thing to have a tree limb on a power line. So um, everybody is, as you, as you mentioned before, this is the hour. They're putting the training into action, and they're going out and staying very busy. We'll bring you the latest uh, damage uh, reports as we get them. Uh, for now, we'll send it back to you in the studio, Jim and Allison. Very good, Rebecca Fox. Thank you. All right, so headlines of the hour. Uh, building on what Rebecca just mentioned, 1,600 people out of power. That's according to Ori Electric. Customers of Santee Cooper and Polly's Island are without uh, any uh, electricity at this hour. And probably the, the big uh, headline of the hour, 74 mile per hour winds recorded now at the Myrtle Beach Pavilion. Yeah, to find out what the latest is, let's check in now with uh, Chief Meteorologist Ed Piotrowski. Ed? Well, we have an update for you just in the last few seconds, believe it or not, a wind gust of 75.2 miles per hour at the Myrtle Beach Pavilion. So once again, the core of this hurricane right overhead now. Most of us are not experiencing anything more than tropical storm force winds, but on rare occasions down by the beaches, we are getting hurricane force wind gusts. Right now, sustained winds constantly blowing up there in the 30s. How about 45 mile per hour easterly and southeasterly wind right now? We've seen this sustained at times up to 63 and in a for a brief few seconds, we had a wind gust of 75.2, right now easterly at 58 miles per hour. Just amazing what's happening down along the Grand Strand right now, and we're showing it to you second by second as the time ticks away here. And again, we are right in the core of the system as we speak. 
came ashore somewhere between Bulls Bay and Georgetown, has been hugging the coast and moving north-northeast. It's not getting any stronger, but we are experiencing the core of the storm right now over extreme northeastern parts of Georgetown County and right up on through the Grand Strand. Sustained winds southeast and east at 45 to 50 miles per hour. They will continue to blow like this probably for another half hour before the winds gradually start to subside as the storm does head north.